Welcome everybody to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, we're going to be fly fishing for drum, or also known as sheephead. These are strong fish that are difficult to catch on a fly rod. You need a lot of stealth, you have to use tactics, and we'll be using little nymphs to catch them. Ian James is going to be our guest. He's the author of the best-selling book, Fumbling with a Fly Rod, and he'll be talking about some of the tactics and techniques we need to catch these fish. It's going to be a great show. I know you're going to enjoy it. Stay with us. The new Fly Fisher is sponsored by the Atlantic Salmon Federation Bank of Montreal MasterCard, Ducks Unlimited, Canada's conservation company, Teton Fly Reels, Hodgman Outdoor Products. Freshwater drum, also known as sheephead, are found in the Great Lakes and other lake and river systems throughout parts of North America. Drum are a bottom dwelling species that feed principally on immature insects, crayfish, minnows, and mollusks. Their average size is between 5 to 15 pounds. In today's show, Ian and I are stocking these fish on large, shallow flats of Lake Ontario. The drum will often cruise these flats, searching for food, and are usually attracted to areas where a stream or creek runs into the lake. The rig Ian likes to use is a 9 to 12 foot liter of 20 pound test Berkeley Fireline attached to a 6 pound tippet of clear mono. What's happening here is the fish are in looking for mayfly nymphs and caddis fly nymphs. They're basically feeding on nymphs at this time of the year. What we're going to do is throw the fly, throw the fly straight up into the creek, mm -hmm. and as it comes back towards us, we're going to dead drift the fly back in towards us. By dead drifting, what I'm talking about is keeping the rod tip down. Most people, when they dead drift, will keep the rod up. What I prefer my clients to do is to keep the rod tip down. And as the line comes back towards you, just gently tug the line back in. You're not moving the fly, you're just catching the slack line as mm -hmm. it comes towards you. When the fish takes the fly, it's very gentle. It's just a little tap tap. Quite often you think it's a weed. When that happens, all you need to do is lift the reel up ever so slightly or pull the reel backwards towards you. And that's enough to set the hook. You don't want us to do a, a set up like this? No, if you do this, you'll pull the fly out of its mouth. The biggest mistake that fly fishermen make when they're setting a hook on a fish, it doesn't matter if it's bass, trout, salmon, pickle, whatever, is to do the traditional lift of the rod tip. And all you're going to succeed in doing there is pulling the fly out of the fish's mouth. Even when you're Atlantic salmon fishing, quite often salmon will take a fly and move off river. You don't feel it, but if you do this hook set, you pull it right out of the mouth. The best two hook sets, in my opinion, are lifting the handle or tightening on the line and pulling the handle back towards you. The fish feels that something is up, they'll turn away from you, then lift the rod tip and the fish will hook himself. In the springtime, there's a lot of uh, other species of fish in here like gar. Uh, in the early summer, the smallmouth, uh, pickerel, uh, what else is in here? Quillback carp suckers. They're right in beside the drum. Red horse. Um, I mean, it's okay to joke about it, but a three pound or four pound smallmouth is an incidental catch. Can... Well, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, more about the rig, the rods we're yep. using. Like I'm using a, uh, a six weight, uh -huh. and I'm using a, a Cortland uh, 
weight four and six uh, ghost tip. Yeah. Because you said, you know, because of the clarity yep. of the water, yeah, I mean, it. any advantage you can uh, put in your uh, behalf in terms of uh, not spooking the fish? Oh, absolutely. What, I, it, what I've gone with is I've got a, it's a Fenwick HMG, six weight rod, a floating line. It's a Cortland 444 or a laser line, I believe. And uh, just a very long leader. And for the back of the leader, I've just attached some straight six pound fire line because there's no stretch so you get better bite detection and then for the tippet I've just run out about two or three feet of six pound drenning which is nice and clear there we go there's one all right there you got that. that's a smallmouth smallmouth yeah you rascal an alternative species Colin <laughs> Great Lake Smallmouth. What do you see the colors on these guys? They're quite. Now pretty. they're very light colored, aren't they? Yeah. Here. Yeah, he's Comparison a real. He's a lot quite of the, small. Yeah. There we go. Come here, buddy. I'm here to help. Come on in. There they're we go. Very light colored, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, very light indeed. That's a nice, healthy looking fish. Nice fish. Not very big. One of the smaller ones out of here. Check down the throat to see if there's anything there. There isn't. Put them back in. I'll just grab the pliers out the bag. I'll come right out. One more before we go. Nice little guy. Not big, mm -hmm. but at least they're here. Never throw them back in. Just cradle them in the water. Just swim away with that arrogant sort of splash off the back of the tail. I like that. It's like, see you, buddy. Add the split shot, just crimp it against the line and squish it down gently with your teeth. Or a pair of pliers because the stuff's lead so it's pretty toxic. And I've also got one tiny split shot right at the head of the fly here. If you take a look at this, you'll see that the split shot is quite dark. To do this, all you do is take a regular split shot, it's silver colored, it's made out of lead, put it in a jar with some bleach and over a couple of days the bleach will oxidize the outside of the uh, split shot and it takes on a dark color. This is critical in catching fish. If it's nice and bright and shiny, the fish will have a tendency to grab the split shot or worse, be spooked. If it's nice and dark, it just looks like some other piece of stone or junk coming down the river and they're more inclined to take the fly. Every time you snagged up, if you're lucky enough to get the fly back, check that the leader is still fine, that there's no scratching or abrasions on it. If there is, obviously change it and also check that the hook is sharp. This one's sliding across my nail and it isn't. It's just gliding across there. It's not very sharp. It's quite dull. I'm going to take my little file, go against the point. Nine times out of ten, the bend or the rag is on the inside edge and just tweak it along the edge. As I drag this across my thumbnail, you can see that it's sticking in and scratching my nail. That's what you want. This way, if a fish just touches it ever so slightly, you'll get the hook set. Think about it, if you've spent two hours driving someplace, you've got all this money invested in equipment, the last thing you want is a dull fish hook. If you only get one hit, you want to make sure that you've got the fish. It's as simple as that. You know, for a 10 or $12 investment, it's just, it's just one of, it's a no-brainer, as they say. It's a no-brainer. Buy a hook sharpener, you'll get more fish. chunk out of them. Probably a cormorant or something to take a bite at them. Healthy fish though other than that. Get them. And again I didn't really lift them out of the water to, to take the hook out. There he goes, he's biting my thumb so he's keen to go. You know, sit right at your boots. Okay. And we have a large container ship I see going by yep. here in the river. 
could you talk about one of the dangers posed by these large uh, ships when we're yeah, waiting? Yeah, that's a good point. We should have mentioned that earlier. The thing about these boats is if they're empty, like this one, you can see that at the back, the back of the boat is out of the water. So this is an empty boat, and it doesn't push a lot of water in front of it. The larger boats that are full will push a wall of water probably about six to seven feet high in front of them. When that goes by, the water level here drops about two to three feet. You'll feel it slide right down your waders. Nothing wrong with that, that's safe. But when the water's coming back in again, there's a really nasty undertow and it will suck you out. So what we do here, wading the shoreline at any of the Great Lakes, when the boat goes by and you feel the water level drop, head towards the beach. You don't have to go in very far. This container ship is empty or it's got a light load because if you look at the stern, you can see that it's out of the water. Yeah. That's the easiest way of telling. If the stern was submerged, then we would probably be heading back in towards the beach a little bit. Now, we spoke about it before, but on the shoals, they're in feeding on nymphs, and they do have a tendency to go after uh, minnows. We spoke about that earlier. Now, is this the one you use where you put the split shot just ahead of it? Exactly. This is a decent fish. Well, it's a pretty good jump there. Yeah. He's around maybe three pounds, maybe, maybe touching three and a half. Now, you got to remember, this is a smallmouth, and I'm almost into the back in here. Nice fish. But no, notice just as the water dropped. Yeah. It's, it does something to them. I don't know what it is. What's the tippet you got on there? Is it I've six got pounds? on a six pound tippet, and that's a decent fish. Right there. See it? Yep. Is that a drum? Yeah, it might be. Yep. And uh, because the fly's got eyes on it, that seems to be the key yeah. for smallmouth and white bass and stuff in here. If you've got eyes on the fly, it works. If you don't, now there's a big weed bed out there and that's where this fish is heading so if you want to strip off your waders and go for a swim <laughs> thanks a lot <laughs> here we that's go. a nice fish he's a nice fish does he got anybody near him oh, like i said it's all the one shape oh, oh baby oh yeah just just get ready because if bleh, 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 that's all folks okay. now be careful because one he's going to be difficult to land i've got a long leader two There'll be other fish swimming in behind him. Yeah. So if you see something, get ready to chuck that in. He's a decent bass. Not really huge, but he's up there. Come here. There we go. I'm here to help. See They're very, oh, yeah, very spooky. Bad. Colin, the host of the show, and I will be using long leaders of about 10 feet. The end of the leader, the tippet for me is around six pounds. It's very, very fine. And I have a small split shot right in front of the fly to get it done. If we're lucky, we'll see little pods of drums swimming around. There's usually three, or three to five, sometimes six in a pod. And they're usually easy to catch. You can get the fly in front of them, let it sit, a couple of twitches, they'll swim in, suck it up, and off to the races. The ones today though, we probably won't see them. So what we're going to be doing is wading along this rocky shoreline. There's little drop-offs and pockets. There's a little creek coming out here and the drum will be sitting in the creek, so scooping up stuff as it gets washed out. And what we're going to do is get below them, cast up into the creek and bring the fly back in a dead drift. If we keep the rod tip down and keep the reel down, the hits are very, very light. And all we need to do to set the hook is move the reel backwards or just lift the reel up gently. You'll notice that when we're fishing, keep your eye on the rod tip. We'll have the rod tip down on the water surface. This technique works for smallmouth, carp, rainbow, steelhead, and a whole multitude of other species. Again, the freshwater drum has a wide range. It goes from northern Ontario, sort of Lake Abitibi, all the way down through the states, through the Mississippi Valley, all the way down as far as Mexico and to Guatemala. Oh, it's a white bass. White bass. Okay. Oh, this is a nice one. Oh, yes. Come to Papa. I'm here to help. Pluck my banjo. Come here, fish. Here we go. Oh, pretty fish. 
pretty, pretty fish. One of those incidental catches, friends. As you can see, we're not catching much today. And that might be because it's sunny or it might be because my friend walked out on top of where all the fish were laying. But of course, fishing here in the Great Lakes, we don't really care too much about that. There are a lot of fish. And if you watch my friend over there, the host of your show, in about six steps, he's going into the great beyond. And all we'll see is his tilly hat floating gently on the waves. It's enough to make you fine for the highlands. Sheephead and drum. Sheephead, yeah, sheephead and drum and fullback. If we had targeted this as a species, we wouldn't have got it. Don't want to come in, is it? Yeah, that's bringing him in here. There's another two swimming right in behind the hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's one shadow. Yeah, and another one the right. Yep, there's one in behind that again. That's missing. Okay, let's get the scan. Nah, get this head up. Some of the, uh, Are you going to grab them for me? Yeah, these are beautiful fish. Yeah, look at the scale. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Pretty, pretty fish, isn't it? Quillback carp sucker. Very small mouth. But look yeah, at the scale. Up. Look at the scale pattern on the back. Gorgeous. Oh, there he goes. What I'm doing here is a variation of the traditional still water retrieve in the UK, where they'll keep the rod tip pointed down the fly line, and they'll just use the end of the line as an indicator. So they'll have about a two inch drop from the tip of the rod to the water surface. And if that straightens out or jumps or dips, you, you know there's a fish there. Um, what I find with the fire line is because I've got that as the main part of my leader, the bite detection is absolutely incredible. Um, so I don't really have to watch the tip of the line. What I'm actually looking at is the very tip of the fly line in the water. I can just see it below the surface. And if that dips or moves or does something that's a bit strange or that it hasn't been doing before, I'll just pull the rod back or lift the rod handle. And that will be me setting the hook on the fish. And the line just, it went slack. There was weight of the fly and the little bits of split shot. And all of a sudden it went slack and it lifted felt a little head shake. Oh, that's a nice, yeah, fish. nice fish. That's a beautiful, beautiful prey. Um, here, you're going to take a grab of him, Paul. There's a quite thick, don't just don't hold the leader. Hold on, hold on. Oh, okay. Come out, lift him or anything, nope. right? That's the easy way. Lean him against you. Okay. Body like that. Oh, beautiful. There's a sheep head. Look at the fin. Beautiful fish. Mm -hmm. Absolutely see the rounded, gorgeous. Uh, Look at the rounded tail I was telling you about. Yeah. Look at the color of the fins. Beautiful, beautiful fish. I'll just uh, keep them in the water for a second. How much does that one weigh about? Oh, three, maybe five. Yeah, five at the outside edge. But this is the size of the smallmouth we could have been catching in here too. But you can see that their mouth is adapted for vacuuming stuff up off the bottom. And that's... Uh, Top part here, they've got that big bump. Nice and lightly bump on the top, right? Yep, flies out. Now, what we got to take a look at is the way they feed. See the mouth drops open. They vacuum stuff off, stuff insects and things off at the bottom. And if you can see down his throat, can you see the big uh, pharyngeal sort of molar type things going on at the back there? I don't know if you can see that or not. Maybe you can. Can you? You can look way down. You really don't want to put your finger down there. Just, I'm just on the edge of it, right there. 
If you go any further, if they get a grip of you, it's really quite painful. I'll just give them a bit more time. And again, just look at the size of the petrol fins at the front here. Designed for keeping the fish right down on the bottom. See that? Quite big. And they've got that really neat shape to them as well. But they're beautiful fish. I mean, they're gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Okay, let's let them go. All set. Looks like he's ready. Now, did you manage to see down and see the... Ah, oh, excellent. It's a decent right. fish, though. We'll get some more. Oh, I hope so. Just rub his tummy a little bit. They like that. To learn more about this show, our series, or the patterns we use today, and please visit us on the World Wide Web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Well, we've had a great day of fly fishing here on the flats along the lake. Trying to get sheephead, we only got one. Plus, uh, we've got quite a few other great species, as you saw. I guess the key is that these tactics that Ian spoke about today will really help you if you're fly fishing along lakes, using nymph patterns and other types of uh, flies to catch fish. From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher is sponsored by the Atlantic Salmon Federation Bank of Montreal MasterCard, Ducks Unlimited, Canada's conservation company, Teton Fly Reels, Hodgman Outdoor Products.